Today I want to talk about something that can, is sensitive to many Mormons, probably most all of them. And I want to address this the re, with the respect towards the people that I still love and cherish and hold dear to my heart. Um, but with that said, um, this is uh, regarding garments and wearing of what has, I guess you could say, the buzzwords of magical underwear. Um, when I was 20 years old and I went through the temple for the first time, I made a commitment and a promise to wear um, garments, which were considered um, to wear as a daily reminder of the promises and other covenants that I made in the temple. And I did. I wore them faithfully day and night for, um, I don't know how many years, 19 years, I think? No, probably not 19, probably 17 years. Anyway, it doesn't matter. A really long time. <laughs> Um, I wore them pretty faithfully. And as I started to go into my doubting phase, I realized I was kind of having this issue with them. Not so much how they felt or what kind of what they look like. They're not the most beautiful things, but I just started to, because I was doubting so many things and that was one of them, like really, I don't get this. There are other ways I can remember promises that I've made than literally having to physically wear a, a garment, thus they're called garments. Um, and so I would do little things that would make me not feel so guilty about not wearing them. So for example, I'd get up in the morning and I'd go work out and I'd come home and get right back into my motherly responsibilities and just not get in the shower until later in the evening because I felt like, well, I'm in my workout clothes. I can just stay in my workout clothes all day. I'm kind of working out as I clean the kitchen or clean a bat toilet or, you know, so I kind of had that mentality and I would do that quite a bit. Um, and then I felt like in the evening when I'd shower and change and put my, my garments back on under my clothes. And that's okay, I wasn't doing anything wrong. Um, even though technically that's probably not how, what you're supposed to do, and I knew that. But I think this kind of goes back to so much conditioning that was done. There's often kind of an undercurrent that if you're not wearing your garments, you could be harmed. Um, there's been stories of people who've been injured who have not been injured in places where their garments were. And, um, and so it was kind of always a little bit, I don't want to say a fear tactic, but I felt a little bit like those stories, now looking back, were a bit manipulative. Because I don't personally think that God in heaven is worried if I'm wearing those or not. I really don't think that matters <laughs> if there is a God in heaven. But I started to realize I was not thinking for myself. If I felt in my soul that I don't have to wear this garment every day of my life, day and night, to appease a God or to remember promises that I made, that it wasn't sitting well with me anymore. I had done nothing wrong. I hadn't sinned. I hadn't, I don't know, maybe I swore a few times. <laughs> nothing that I felt guilty about that I shouldn't put my garments on but it was just an example of me not thinking for myself I knew in my head that I don't really think this needs to happen I don't think I really need to wear this but the church says I should um, I hear lessons at church all the time about wearing your garments and it's a promise I make in the temple and I can't get a temple recommend unless I wear my garments day and night it's kind of this perpetual way of thinking and as I started to sit back and go, okay, wait a second, how do I really think about this? Forget all that I've been taught and conditioned since I was a little girl, because you hear about garments before you go in the temple. You know, it's there, I knew it, I, I was doing it. But now what do I really think? Obviously, I'm kind of not feeling comfortable in them anymore or not wanting to wear them. What do I really think about this? And so when I talk about thinking for yourself, I think that was a huge part of the process for me. Um, and thinking for yourself, as I'm finding as I use that term, some people get mad at me for using that term, but all I can say is for me, I felt like I was finally starting to think for myself. And I use the example of garments because it's a pretty big deal in Mormonism. It, it is something that people hold very sacred. And I don't really have a problem with that. But what I had a problem with is how it is used to kind of make everything else fall into play with the temple recommend. And people would look to see if, you know, you could kind of see outlines of them. Um, anyway, I could go on and on about that. But just keeping it in perspective of 
of me finally thinking, I don't have to wear those to have a relationship with God. Um, and the whole thinking for myself came into play there. That was a pretty big deal. And so I remember the day when I finally decided, and of course I had left my beliefs of Mormonism behind me, and I had decided I'm not wearing these anymore. It was an extremely liberating feeling of I can do what I want. I can do what sits well with me. I don't have to be constrained by the beliefs of something that I was told years and years ago. And so as you're on this journey, <laughs> I keep referring to that. Trust yourself. This is my biggest message to you. Trust yourself. And remember that that intuition, that gut feeling that you have is always right. Thank you for listening to my vlog today. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also sign up for my newsletter on my soulsearchinggirl.com website. I'd love to keep you updated with new things that I'm creating for you. And um, in all, above all else, trust yourself.